Hello there everybody in YouTube land and welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. In this video we'll be looking at structural functionalism, how it views society, what's the difference between a manifest function and a latent function, and what are these institutions and social facts I keep hearing so much about. All good questions and the answers to all of them are coming up. While watching this video, use the guided notes. The guided notes are notes that I've created to go along with all of my videos. You can always find them in the description below. The guided notes go along with the video and help you remember all the important information. We're going to talk about a lot of different stuff on this channel, and it's important for you to be able to reference back to your notes. Studies show the more notes you take, the more you'll be able to remember, and also the less you'll have to rewatch this video before your quiz or test or whatever you're preparing for. Also, the nice thing is by the end of the videos, you'll have a nice study guide that you can use whenever you would like. So I'd encourage you to take out the guided notes as we continue to learn about all these different theories in sociology. Now structural functionalism was created by Emil Durkheim and it's a really interesting theory. Essentially what this theory does is it views society as a clock you could say or a car or a living cell. Now what I mean by this is every person in society at least according to this theory, has a specific job and role, and they need to do that for everything to work. And all these individual people that live in the society work together, whether they realize it or not. That's how it's similar to a clock and a car and a cell. We have gears, we have belts, we have all these different things in a clock and a car. In a cell, we have different parts of the cell that all have a unique function in order for the cell to survive. If you take out some of the gears of a clock, or if you take out the belts in the car, or if we take out the membrane in a cell, we'll start to see decay or the items no longer work. And the same is for society. Structural functionalism believes there's an equilibrium to society, that we have institutions and social facts. We'll get into what those are in just a second, but it's on a scale and they need to be balanced. If we have rapid change, well then society starts to crumble and crack. And actually, structural functionalism would say society can't have rapid change, and it would do things to prevent that. And when change does occur in society, it's going to be minimum. It's going to be whatever the bare necessity is. So if we have a new disruptor come into society, the rest of society will adapt to it only to what they need to to keep equilibrium. We'll never see an overcorrection. The reason why, again, is because everyone needs to do their part in order for society to function correctly. Now let's break down this kind of complicated meaning a little bit further and get into manifest functions, latent functions, because these are going to be really important. So structural functionalism is looking at society from a macro level, meaning it's looking at society as a whole. It's not focused on the individuals. Actually, this theory says the individuals really have no power and say in society. It's, again, these big institutions that'll play a part. Now, we're going to get into what institutions are in just a second, but before we do, we need to talk about a manifest function and a latent function. Manifest functions are what is the intended purpose of an institution. It's the original goal for it. So an example of an institution is a school. Now, the manifest function of school is to teach students to be able to prepare them for the real world to make sure they understand the social norms of society and can operate when they are an adult, or to prepare them for college so that way they can get a job, or a trade school so that they could get a specialized job. Whatever it may be, it's to prepare the students for the future and to be productive members of society. That is the manifest function. The manifest function of the media is to inform and entertain society. That is the intended purpose. Now, latent functions are unintended consequences that happen from a function. Now what I mean by this is we know school, the point is to teach you to understand content and prepare you for society. But a latent function of school is you also develop friend groups. Maybe you get into a great crowd of kids and you all of a sudden are now in band and you're in athletics and you become so busy and you actually become too busy that your grades start to slip a little bit. Or you discover some new concerts and all of these new musicians that you really like and you spend more time doing social activities late at night instead of sleeping and preparing for your tests the next day. Now those are seen as some negative but also positive unintended consequences. And that's important to understand too. Latent functions can be good and bad. 
you getting involved in drugs because you met peers that you would have never met before in your life at school and then starting to slowly but surely fail out of school is a negative consequence to the educational system. On the other hand, though, you developing a friend group that helps push you and also helps prepare you for the rest of your life and brings you happiness and joy is a positive latent function. So there's positives and negatives to, of course, everything in life. And latent functions are no exception. So again, manifest function, these are the intended functions of an institution and what we're talking about. A latent function is an unintended consequence, which can be good or bad. So make sure you understand that because they're going to come up in life all of the time and also throughout this theory. So now that we've gone over manifest functions and latent functions, it's time to explore institutions. I've already given some examples of institutions and referenced it multiple times. Institutions are things that have been created to help make sure that society moves forward and also to make sure that society doesn't experience radical change, that things are always progressing. That's key. Now, each institution has different roles within society. So some examples of an institution that I've already given is a school and the media. But we also have government agencies, hospitals, the post office, the military, corporations. All of these serve different tasks within a society. And they're all crucial to have operating at full capacity if we want to have a successful and productive society. Remember too, these manifest functions within all these institutions will be different because they all serve different goals. And there'll also be other unintended consequences, which would be the latent functions. Now on the other side of our scale, we have social facts. Now social facts are really unique things and we don't think about them a lot because they don't affect us until we actually go against them. Now what I mean by this is these are things that influence us every single day. They're around us all the time, but you really don't see them. And the reason why is because a lot of times we are just going with what we're supposed to do. You really start to see these things when all of a sudden you want to do something that differs from what you're supposed to be doing. Social facts are these things like laws, the birth rate, religious beliefs and customs, things that we as an individual really don't have any influence over. You probably don't wake up every day saying, oh shoot, I'm worried that the police are going to come get me because I'm probably going to start speeding by 30 miles an hour at 3 p.m. Or, ugh, I really don't like that my religious organization doesn't let this, this, and this happen because I wanted to do that today. Or you're probably not thinking about, oh wow, the birth rate for all the developed countries around the world is currently declining. I wonder how that's going to impact the future job growth and how that will also impact my retirement because there'll be less people now working. Those are things you just don't think about all the time. The only time we really think about laws is when we're studying them or if we're worried that we're breaking one. For religion, you're not really worried about all of the different doctrine and the different scriptures until you're studying it or maybe you want to do something that differs from what you're supposed to. And birth rates, I mean, if you say that you're thinking about it, you're probably lying unless you're studying it. But you don't think about these things, even though they have big influences over us as individuals and as a society as a whole. So social facts are these invisible forces that impact us and can influence our lives without us necessarily knowing. And that's the difference between social facts and institutions. Institutions are overt. They're in your face. You'll see them. They have blatant purposes. And the social facts have purposes too, and I'm not trying to diminish them, but you don't see them impacting you all the time. And both of these together help make sure that society is always moving forward. It's a balancing act. Hopefully you're starting to kind of see that structural functionalism really focuses on having kind of order. Now one of the things that structural functionalism has a problem with is actually change. It has a really hard time explaining big changes because according to structural functionalism that wouldn't be able to happen. Now one of the things when we look at society through a structural functionalist lens, we would see farmers for example. Farmers need to farm and they need to provide food for society. Farmers, though, don't have the time to be able to also teach their kids and to make all their clothes and to also produce goods that can be turned into computers. And they don't have time to also then manage the country and society and also inform everyone with a TV show. No, they don't have time for that. They need to focus on food production. But the teacher has time to teach their son or daughter. 
the education that they need. And the corporation has the time to be able to produce the goods, the computer that the farmer needs. And the government has time to be able to do their tasks. Everyone's operating and doing their own tasks to benefit society. And they all have become connected. Everyone relies on someone else for a different task that they need. And they don't have time to do it themselves. And this is why structural functionalism struggles with change. If all of the farmers decided they didn't want to be farmers anymore, society would start to collapse. We need them to be farmers. Just like they need us to teach their kids and they need us to produce their clothes. Everyone has a certain task. So this is the challenge of structural functionalism. It has a hard time adapting and being able to see massive social changes. So all of this is connected through transportation and these institutions that keep the whole model working and moving forward. Another example would actually be the United States government. Now think about it this way. Currently in the world, America has been said to be very divided. Now, that might be a little bit of an understatement, but we have Republicans who have been screaming that the Democrats and the Socialists are coming and the country is going to go down the toilet and it's all over. And on the other side, we have the Democrats saying that the Republicans are destroying everything and we're losing our morals and we're losing everything that we once had. Now, the reality is, is a lot actually changing? The American Constitution and also just how everything functions is to actually slow things down. We have a filibuster for a reason. We don't see radical changes in government because it's a slow process. The system couldn't handle it. A structural functionalist would say this is a perfect example. Everyone's doing their own tasks, everyone's doing their own things. And while people might be worried that we're gonna see this drastic change if President A or B gets elected and they're gonna throw everything out, the reality is the system stops that. One last example of structural functionalists would be looking actually at the old family style. The man being the breadwinner, the woman taking care of the kids, the kids being quiet, focusing on school and helping out around the house. Everyone has a certain task and everyone does what they need to for the family to be successful. This is also another controversy with structural functionalism. It actually validates some inequality. It says that, yeah, certain people are suited to do certain tasks over others and that inequality needs to happen. Not everyone's going to be equal. People will do certain tasks in order to make sure that they can benefit their family unit, their society, whatever it may be. And that's just life. You can't have it where everyone's the same because not everyone is good at doing everything else. Hopefully this video gave you a really good understanding of what structural functionalism is, what's the difference between manifest functions and latent functions, how structural functionalism views society, what's the difference between institutions and social facts, and just some examples of this theory in practice. I'm Mr. Sin. I hope this video helped you better understand this theory. Make sure to check out my other videos on conflict theory, symbolic interactionism, and social constructionism. They'll all give another, hopefully, good explanation of the theories. Until next time, I'll see you online. Make sure, by the way, too, to subscribe. Why not support the channel? You watched the video, and if you made it this long, it must not have been too bad. So subscribe and help me out as well. Thanks again for your time, and have a great day.